Hello, hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. My name's Frank. It's a pleasure to have you here with me. And today we are going to do a day of eating basically healthy, organic, grass-fed, high-quality foods. And some of you think I'm just trolling right now to uh, get the other carnivores to uh, deviate from their diets to kind of prove that everyone copies Frank Tofano. And uh, uh, hey, maybe some of you are right. Maybe some of you are wrong. I guess we'll find out in the long term, right? Uh, so we're going to do like a first meal, pretty healthy, pretty clean by modern standards. Basically going to be, you know, clean meat, clean starch, carbohydrates, perhaps some fruit, uh, something a little calorically dense. And then the second meal, we're going to go, you know, a little on the edge in regards to like food quality and cheating a little bit. Maybe we'll have some cheeseburgers. We'll see. Uh, but let's get started with this first meal and uh, prepare some rice. So rice is something I've only added in the past two or three weeks. I've been cooking organic white basmati rice. This takes like 30, 45 minutes to do. So I actually ordered a rice cooker that hasn't come yet. Uh, before that, we were doing mostly pasta, just organic wheat pasta. I actually even bought, I don't know if I have it up here. Yeah, I do. I bought some organic frozen rice, which probably isn't that great because um, the water they use and you know it's packaged in plastic, but honestly, you know, making this rice for 40 minutes every day, I was a little, you know, out of it because I had to basically wait an hour, an hour and a half to eat. So I just throw this frozen rice in the pan for maybe 10 minutes and it warms up. And uh, this is what I'm going to be doing until I get this rice cooker in a day or two, because honestly, this is, this is too much. You have to, you have to put like a cup of rice in here with two to three cups of water, bring it to a boil, cover it reduce it to a simmer, monitor it, make sure the water's good. It's basically got to be at the stove for 45 minutes to an hour to, to make the rice properly, and it's just not worth it, at least from a time investment perspective. I, I was also doing uh, some potatoes. Uh, the pasta was a bit easier, but I noticed that the rice was a tiny bit better on my stomach, so that's what I've been doing. We have some ground beef from Frankie's Free Range Meat. Uh, actually on sale for very low price. So we have 93.7 and 85.15 available for $6 a pound. This is actually 93.7. I've been sticking to the leaner meat lately. This is really simple. I'm just gonna put some water in the pan here. Filter, reverse osmosis. Uh, I got a bunch of fats I can choose from. I usually I put a tablespoon or two of fat in this. I think I'll use the coconut oil today. So this whole bag of rice is 840 calories. And if I put a lot of fat in it, like I usually do, I can almost finish the bag. So this is like a little too much for one meal, but not enough for two meals. So it's not ideal. Now that I got rice over half my kitchen. So we're just going to cover this on a medium high heat. And that should take about 10 minutes to be good. So recently I've been doing about a pound of beef per day and actually smash burgers. But for this meal, I think we're just going to... Uh, poach it in the pan lightly, just kind of warm it through. So I'll take half of this one pound container. You guys could see this 93.7 stuff is really lean. So I'll get about half of that in the pan, a little bit of salt on it. Now with the rest of the ground beef, I'll actually get my burgers ready for later. So I just want to kind of form something into a ball, press it a little bit. And then when we let that sit for a couple hours, it'll, it'll cook and brown up a lot nicer. Got our burgers ready for later. I'm just gonna season them both sides with salt. Now, if you don't plan on eating for like five, six, seven hours and it's the summertime, you might wanna put those burgers in the fridge. Now, depending on what my body is craving, that'll determine how much I cook the meat. And lately it's, you know, winter, it's cold, so I, I want more cooked food. So, you know, normally where I would stop here where there's still some like raw bits and pieces in the ground beef, I'll actually kind of cook this a little bit more almost all the way through. From an oxidation, digestion, and nutrient perspective, you wanna cook it through, but you don't wanna keep cooking it. So as soon as the meat is, is completely cooked and heated, that's when you wanna stop. That'll still preserve pretty much all the nutrients. If you do it on like a medium, a medium low heat, you're good to go. But if you start like hard searing the, the ground beef and you leave it in the pan for you know 10, 15 minutes, 
it will be a lot harder to digest. You will degrade the proteins more and the, and the B vitamins more. So this is where we want it. There's still a tiny bit of pink in here, but the residual heat from the pan will, will cook the rest of this beef through. So our rice is kind of melting. I'm gonna put a bit of salt in here. That was probably way too much. Now this rice is cooked already. So as soon as it's kind of thawed out, it's done. You don't have to cook it more. So this probably needs like two or three more minutes. I think for this meal, we'll have some apple cider from a local farm. Uh, maybe we'll have some of those grapes as well. So this cider I'm gonna to use to wash down a bunch of different types of digestive enzymes and possibly some antimicrobials. I guess you could say my diet has been consistently inconsistent over the past few months. Yes, the beef has been the main protein source in my diet the whole time, but carbohydrates, I've really been switching around. At first, I was having a lot of pasta, sometimes some like boiled white potatoes. Then I started eating uh, some French fries and pasta and doing different preparations on the potatoes and on the pasta. And then I started doing rice just in the past few weeks. Uh, occasionally, I'll have some high quality bread here and there. Uh, I was even doing tortilla chips a little bit at the start. I was having uh, organic wheat tortillas and some organic corn tortillas. I'll actually show you guys that I haven't had it recently because I haven't been craving it or wanting it, but I was doing that. You guys are going to make fun of me because I was eating a little bit of hummus for some calories, which, you know, it tastes okay. It wasn't bad. It, it works with my stomach. And this is an example of the tortilla. So uh, organic corn tortillas. Uh, these are probably actually going to go bad if I don't eat them soon. And these are a slightly better quality, uh, but they're in the frozen section, the, the sprouted corn tortillas. We got our lightly cooked lean beef. So what I'll do is I'll save this rice for the next time I make another bag of this and I'll have half of this with the first meal and then the rest with the second meal to finish off that second bag. From a macronutrient perspective, we have plenty of caloric energy. We have protein from the beef, carbs from the rice, and we added plenty of rendered fat to increase the caloric amount, maybe two tablespoons in the rice and one tablespoon in the beef. Uh, from the micronutrient perspective, we have a lot of B vitamins, a lot of bioavailable minerals, and I have to brush up on the mineral profile of rice. I'm assuming it's just a decent amount of potassium, so really kind of just start here. Let's get started, and then halfway through the meal, I'm gonna go take those antimicrobials and drink like a cup or two of the cider. I'm not gonna show you guys that. Uh, sometime in the future, I might go over that. This is a little dry, so let me get something to drink. Now I've been switching between like organic juice from Whole Foods, cider from a local farm. I used to even juice some apples and pears and stuff myself. Just from like a caloric standpoint and a craving standpoint, I've always had to have like a decent amount of sugar in the meal. And that has more to do with the body's digestive capability. You know, if you give your body protein and starch, it has to break down protein into amino acids and the starch into carbohydrates. But if you drink something like juice, it has fructose, glucose, sucrose that are processed in different metabolic pathways. So by adding something like juice or fruit to a meal, you're not adding that much extra stress to digestion. From a taste perspective, I've always done this bodybuilding stuff. So even just like some salt on some beef and rice tastes pretty good to me. Now we're a little further into the meal than you could do this at, but you want to make sure to get the enzymes, whatever supplements you're taking, kind of in your stomach and churning with the food. Because if you take all of them after the meal, or like 10, 15 minutes after the meal, they're just going to sit on top and it's not going to be as efficient. So let me go take those enzymes right now, and then we'll finish the meal. You know, ever since I've had the health issues since February of 2018 with the iron overload, the liver dysfunction, digestive issues, I've had to take varying amounts of antimicrobials, digestive enzymes to basically digest my food and not get bacterial overgrowth like candida and SIBO. It's been on and off and I could have probably just avoided all of that stuff if I wasn't bodybuilding and if my food volume was lower, but maybe not. You know, it depends. It's, it's week to week. I mean, I would hope after like a year or a year and a half of supplementing copper, supplementing magnesium, getting my nutrients in balance, that 
things will go back to normal, but I guess we'll have to find out. I mean, I could eat a little more, but, you know, as I've always said, try to eat to the point you're comfortable. So I'm actually not going to have any grapes. Uh, sometimes what I'll do, and this is probably every other meal, is my snack and my, like, thing I have with my meal will just be the juice. So, you know, sometimes I'll have fruit with it. Sometimes I'll have cookies. Sometimes I'll have some chocolate to add some extra calories. About half the time, it'll just be like organic fruit juice. Uh, if any of you guys off the top of your head know if these uh, milk containers contain like BPA, I'm assuming they do. And the reason I'm asking is because uh, if we start selling milk on Frankie's Syringe Meat and dairy products, um, the glass half gallon containers are like $1.75 to $2 each. So, you know, if we sell milk in plastic, we can charge like $4 for half a gallon or $3.75. But if we put the milk in glass, we're going to have to charge something like 7 bucks for it. So let me know. I would definitely rather not compromise the integrity of the product. You know, if there's any concern with the plastic, we will absolutely sell it in glass and we'll just have to say, hey, you know, that's how it is. If you want to save money and buy plastic, then you probably shouldn't be buying raw milk. So this is just local organic apple cider. It certainly tastes a lot better than, you know, even biodynamic apple juice or whatever juice you get from the supermarket. I mean, in general, from like a gut microbiome perspective, drinking sugary juices is probably one of the worst things you could do potentially. Uh, so you want to be careful and understand like the sugar profile of it, know what you're doing from that perspective. Now, I don't count calories, I just eat to appetite. If I'd have to guess, that meal was probably 12, 13, 1400 calories. So it's, it's by no means a small meal. Now, my schedule's been off these past few days, so I've only been having one meal. But today, I definitely want to show you guys two just to kind of throw some food variety in there and, and definitely show you guys a, a couple of other things that I have in my pantry, which we could actually go do now. So we actually got quite a bit of stuff to look at. Here I have... Uh, some coconut oil that I've been using because it has antimicrobial properties. Uh, just, you know, regular sea salt. Uh, we have some Nature's Glucose line around here that I use as a sweetener, uh, mainly in the cookies I've been making recently. Uh, that's why I have uh, organic semi-sweet chocolate chips. Uh, this is cacao with sugar and vanilla. They, they taste pretty good and I enjoy making uh, the cookies with them as opposed to regular cacao. Here are some leftover uh, apples from the Thanksgiving recipe for the apple pie. What I might actually do is I might take uh, these with like some raw grass-fed butter and some salt and some nature's glucose and I might just make like a pie filling I can eat myself. Just some raisins. I don't know. I saw raisins and I was like, hey, these are, you know, these are kind of healthy, kind of okay. Organic, decent source of calories, you know, easy to eat, nice snack on the go. Some more nature's glucose uh, in here we have more white rice at the bottom some brown rice that you guys saw on the last day of eating uh, these are potatoes i gotta make these i think these are gonna go bad soon so later we'll save that as a surprise for later uh, that's some of the pasta i've been eating a couple containers of beef broth just sometimes i'll cook the rice or the uh, potatoes and beef broth and i don't know if we'll have this later i think we're gonna have cookies later so i might as well show you guys uh, maybe I'll have chocolate on occasion. Uh, you know, I was, I was actually doing much more chocolate a few months ago. Now I prefer snacks. And these are like crack. These cocomels, coconut milk caramels. It's like basically raw cacao and sugar, which is, you know, and the ingredient list isn't completely horrible. You know, everything's organic. There's not too many additives. And... Uh, they're really, really tasty and delicious. And most importantly, you know, I feel pretty good after eating them. I actually bought this box and then another another box of them because I like them so much. But I actually, <laughs> I only had these like one day and, and that was basically it. Mostly the chocolate chip cookies, which you guys will see later. Now, one day I was craving some English muffins. So I actually, I bought two packages of English muffins and I only ate like two with some raw butter. Uh, so maybe my family will have those. I've been doing onions on occasion. Maybe we'll do some later. We got the organic lemons. Uh, I got to get some vitamin C in sometime this week. I mean, I've been messing around with some different stuff for recipes. Like I was making water kefir with 
some molasses, I have some cane sugar, some coconut sugar. I think down in here is just some cannellini beans and some uh, sweetened condensed milk that I was having. Yeah, so I had a few cans of sweetened condensed milk I was going through, uh, which I really like. And uh, some cannellini beans, which I only had once. And here I have mainly flour, which I'm using to make cookies. We have some rice puffs that I used once to make those granola bars. More flours, some more rice. Uh, this is an oil I didn't talk about last week in my top cooking fats video raw macadamia nut oil. Now on paper, organic macadamia nut oil looks like one of the best possible oils you can consume. In reality, you don't want to cook it because it will oxidize very quickly. The material procurement is questionable with macadamia nuts being so expensive and you have to pay out your butt for this oil. You know, were the nuts moldy? How are they doing this? So, and the taste is very pungent. Uh, so there's a lot of cons to the macadamia nut oil. Uh, I bought it, I haven't really been using it. You guys could try it out. I would definitely not cook with it. Maybe we can do a separate video on like healthy fats that you can consume that aren't good for cooking. You know, like olive oil, macadamia nut oil, certain seed oils and nut oils are actually okay to consume, but you would never, never, never want to cook with them. I mean, just in general, you know, there's so much stuff I probably haven't showed you guys that I've been doing. And, you know, when you've been studying and practicing nutrition for basically 10 years now, it's difficult because there's a lot of stuff that I take for granted that, you know, I kind of understand at face value and people can't really figure out why I'm doing certain things. So hopefully over the next few months, I can clarify some of that stuff for you guys and, uh, and maybe even incorporate it into my next book. But, um, we're gonna go work out, uh, maybe do some work for a couple hours on the computer, and then uh, we'll come down and we'll cook our second meal. And I know I've hinted at it several times, but a lot of the stuff I'm doing is kind of new. You know, I'll come up with new food choices and things I figure out I can tolerate two or three times a month. So a lot of the stuff you see I have in my pantry, you see I'm talking about, maybe I did it once or twice or three times incrementally over the past few months, and as I discover more and more, see what I want to incorporate into my diet, uh, certain things are going to be staples that will stay, and certain things I'll just have once in a while. <laughs> if you guys didn't think I was trolling for the first meal, you'll probably think I'm trolling now. Uh, so we're going to have White Castle style burgers, which is just going to be onions and cheese on a bun, and we're going to have some crinkle cut fries, and some cookies that I made. Now, the cleaner version of this that I was doing, you know, a couple weeks ago was ground beef sauteed with onion, and then I would have like pasta on the side and maybe some sourdough bread. These past two weeks, I've been a little bit like lackadaisical about it, and normally I make the french fries myself, and they do taste a lot better but I saw these at Whole Foods and I was being lazy and I decided to try them out and I have a couple bags left. The ingredients aren't too bad. It's organic potatoes, organic safflower oil, apple juice, sea salt, citric acid. So you know, the omega-6 content of safflower oil isn't actually that bad. Um, so you know, for not having to spend half an hour making uh, potato fries, this is okay for now. I just take half the bag, We'll put it on a sheet tray in the oven at like 425 for maybe uh, maybe they take 20 minutes to warm up. I'll get that started. The diet's making me weak. I can't open bags anymore without scissors. So those fries are nice because you just put the oven on like 400, 500, whatever. They're done in 10, 15 minutes. Great for kids. Great for something quick. For the burgers, you guys are probably curious about what's in these burger buns. There's a lot of ingredients. Wheat flour, water, wheat gluten, cane sugar, yeast organic canola oil. It's not horrible. It's not completely horrible. The main reason that these are okay once in a while is because they don't add iron filings. It's not a fortified wheat flour. That, that's the main thing. If you ever see like fortified wheat flour with iron in it, don't eat it. You'll get really, really sick. Uh, damages your liver, that type of stuff. So we're gonna have two of these buns. Hopefully in the future, I'll, I'll start making these myself. Uh, Cause I do really, 
I do really enjoy this and I like the way the burger tastes. So we have the burger patties that we formed earlier with a little salt on them. We have our burger buns. So this is half of an organic Spanish onion. I used the other half yesterday. Uh, we're just gonna dice this up and then after we sear the burgers in the pan, we'll deglaze it with some stock, put the onions in there and, and soften them up a little bit. Uh, for the cheese, I'm just gonna slice some Gruyere from Frankie's Strange Meat. We'll try to get like two thin slices out of it. So the key to these smash burgers is that the pan is ripping hot. Even stainless steel, it shouldn't stick if we do this right. Okay, so we got our burgers, two slices of Gruyere, onions, and burger patties. So now that this pan is stupidly, stupidly hot, it's smoking, we're gonna take our burger and be really careful with this because the oil is gonna really start splattering. And we're gonna press it down. Same thing with the other burger. Press it down. And we gotta cover this because there's just too much oil splattering. Now after about 45 seconds to a minute, we want to flip these. And you could make the burger a little thicker if you want to go rare, but usually these come out pretty, pretty cooked. So you really want to get under there and scrape up the brown. So that's kind of what you're looking for. And it, it's kind of hard to do this with a stainless steel pan. And we're probably not gonna get this crust on both sides because we don't wanna completely kill the meat, but that's what most fast food restaurants do. They'll, they'll leave it on this side for like another two or three minutes to get that brown crust on both sides. But from a flavor perspective, you only need it on one side and we can preserve more of the nutrients. We have our buns ready to receive our meat. That one looks really good. That one looks pretty good too. What you can do is actually you can scrape up that piece of crusted beef and then put it on the spot that it's missing. It's just some beef broth. You could also use water or onions. And ideally what you could do is you could saute the onions a little bit in the grease and then uh, you could put the broth in and deglaze if you want to just get a little more color on the onions. So while these onions cook, we're gonna take our Gruyere on the burgers and pop these in the oven with the fries. Fries are pretty much ready. Uh, we get a little more browning on them, uh, but the burger should take about five minutes to melt the Gruyere. We have really, really flavorful, delicious onions here because they're gonna soak up all that beef caramelization in the pan that we deglaze with the broth. Just a little bit of salt on the onions. So we're gonna take the other side of our burger bun and I'm gonna split these onions up evenly. Okay, we got our onions on there. Take the burger, put it upside down. Take the burger, put it upside down. I can flip it back over. Two Gruyere onion burgers. And I like cutting these in half. It's a little easier to eat. A little pink in the middle, but you know when you do smash burgers, it's it's kind of hard to get a a rare temperature. So everything's ready at the same time. It only took me about 15 minutes to make two cheeseburgers and have the fries ready. But before we eat this meal, what I do for my second meal is I have the antimicrobials and the enzymes before the meal because I already have food in my stomach. Uh, only for that first meal of the day, I'll wait till halfway through. So I'm gonna take those, but what actually came was that rice cooker I told you guys I ordered. Zojirushi is apparently the best brand of rice cookers. We won't do this today. Uh, next day of eating video, uh, you guys will see the rice cooker in action. If you guys are curious about the enzymes, I did a video probably five, six, seven months ago now where I explained all the different types of digestive enzymes our body needs. And if you watch that video, you can kind of understand what you need to purchase based on what you're eating. Speaking of what we're eating, from a nutrition perspective, obviously a lot of carbohydrate energy. We have the starches here to feed our gut bacteria and it's also broken down into sugars to give our body energy, glycogen stores. Same with the burger bun, really. We do have the burger for the protein source and then uh, the cheese adds some extra fat soluble vitamins, especially the Gruyere, uh, some vitamin K2 in there. Overall, the burger is a source of B vitamins. And I was thinking about this the other day, you know, there's a reason that humans eat burgers and fries a lot. I'm sure 
if you look at the macronutrient breakdown of a typical cheeseburger and fry meal, it's like 20% protein, 80% energy, which is what humans crave and want. So uh, let's uh, chow down. You know, for a while, I've been thinking about doing burger reviews because no one else really does them, but I probably get sick eating all like the fast food and conventional crap. Maybe I could try it just once and film a few in one shot. I usually don't put this many onions on here, but this is actually a lot better than normal. The onions really add to it. I have a couple of fries, and these aren't that great. Ones I make myself are a lot better, but just a couple bites. I don't know, I feel like I feel like this is a healthy white castle. Yeah, you feel okay after eating it. Not poisoning yourself. I think I'll do a, a burger bun recipe for you guys soon. Yeah, you could actually put more onions on this. And I think it'll be even better. <laughs> I'm laughing because some of you guys are thinking about how come Frank doesn't have acne and he's eating this shit? It has more to do with hydration. So what usually happens with this meal is the first half burger tastes really good. The second half burger is like kind of good. And that one was like, eh, it's okay. And now I'm like full, but you know, I don't wanna let this go to waste. One thing that I guess I should have said at the start of this video was, you know, by going organic, you remove a lot of the chemical concerns. So as a pretty good rule of thumb, if you're buying a product and it's labeled organic, unless it's some like really high omega-6 seed oil, it's probably okay to eat. I just wanna do like a quarter bag of those fries. I don't really eat them because they don't taste that good. I'm pretty full, but we got some cookies that are gonna go bad. So we'll have a little bit of cookies. So over here on my counter, I have cookie dough and Oreo filling cream. Uh, so this is chocolate chip that I made a couple days back. You know, it's good on the counter a couple days. And this is an Oreo cream filling uh, that probably doesn't go bad for a couple weeks, I would imagine. I actually made Oreo cookies, but I didn't like them. So I'm just eating like the cookie dough chocolate chip with the cream. This is like my secret low inflammatory cookie recipe that I might publish in my book in the future. But I think we did chocolate chip cookies uh, maybe a year or two ago. And this is basically organic flour with nature's glucose and some other secrets I cannot divulge, but it's good. No baking soda. And then I'll take like a bite of cookie with some other cream. And this cream was a lot smoother when I whipped it initially. You could make this with just butter, confectionery sugar, vanilla powder, and salt, and you whip it up. And they actually do have organic confectioner sugar at Whole Foods. This is literally Oreo filling. I love it. You could try to make it like a Oreo cookie yourself, but they're delicious on their own and together. And I just like crave the calories in this because of the bodybuilding stuff. I mean, I'm getting a little chubby now. I think I still have abs when I'm sitting down though. Yeah. I keep saying I'm getting chubby, but we're still all right. Mm, cookies and cream. I mean, these are so calorically dense. It's like flour, sugar, and fat. It's a, as calorically dense as a food can get is a cookie. Same with this cream. It's pure sugar and fat. Oh my God, did you know Oreos were vegan? I feel pretty good. For some reason, I really get knocked out after that first meal more than the last meal. And the thing that really knocks me out is if I drink a lot of juice, it's just the sugar getting absorbed so quickly, it really spikes your insulin and that type of stuff. So maybe digest for like 20 minutes first, then I'll work out. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please like the video, leave me a comment down below, and of course subscribe if you haven't, make sure that notification bell is checked. And above all, you know, if you guys could share the video on social media, you know, it's also nice if you guys can like stop by, check the channel every day because you know, a lot of people don't get notified anymore. Uh, so if you want to take it a step further than that, you can check out frank-tofano.com uh, where you can see all of my other businesses, Frankie's Free Range Meat, Frankie's Free Range Foods, you get the ground beef, Nature's Glucose, Frankie's Naturals. We're going to do a sale uh, today and Monday, 30% off site-wide 
almost forgot about that. And we also got a bunch of other exciting things moving forward. So thanks again for joining me today, guys. And I'll see you for tomorrow's video.